Here's a data science tutorial on the synthetic control method, one of the most powerful and popular tools in causal inference data science. This is all over the product and marketing data science space. If you guys don't know me, I'm Jonathan. I'm a senior data scientist at Airbnb. I also do career coaching and I've helped clients land jobs at junior, senior, and staff at Uber, Meta, Airbnb, TikTok, BCG, and more. So we use synthetic controls to estimate the impact of something that happened when there was only one or a small number of affected units and there was not randomized experimentation. For example, let's say your company initiated a brand marketing strategy in one region, say by pulling, putting billboards up all over a city. So to use the synthetic control, I first simulated data. I chose there to be 50 different markets with two years of monthly data and a six month post period. Notably, I get, I, they're all pulling from the same distribution with seasonality, but there's also some random walk and uh, some noise as well. So all the markets are different. But importantly, we know the ground truth. So we have there being six post periods, but we don't actually give, we don't actually generate a, a treatment effect. So we know the ground truth effect should be zero. What we're gonna do is test here how well we get a, a, a value back that is close to zero. And here you can see what the data looks like. We have this time series. Of course, this is gonna be two years worth of data. We have a treated region. And then notably, it is not a in a panel form, but it's a wide form. So we have the comparison units, the comparison markets that are all going to the right. Now, there are many techniques out there to get the synthetic control weights, but basically what you're doing is you're forming a weighted average of the untreated regions that when you put them together, they look like the treated region in the period prior to whatever event or treatment uh, start date. So in this case, I'm actually just going to fit a lasso model on the donors, so the other markets. I'm then going to use that lasso model and predict uh, the synthetic control. So I'm basically going to take the predictions out of that lasso model to develop the synthetic control. And then the treatment effects are really just in the post period where we take the actual values and we subtract this uh, weighted average of synthetic control. We can then look at what the average treatment effect is. So it's the, the average effect over that period, as well as looking at the relative effect, which is just dividing it by the, the baseline. So this is what the synthetic control looks like. And it shows the really important part here. All this before the treatment dates are in sample fit. After the treatment date, this is out of sample fit. So when you are comparing, when you're looking at this pre-period, it looks like an amazing fit. On the right-hand side, you are getting a combination of both out of sample fit and any treatment effect that truly exists. Now, we know the ground truth because we simulated the data, so we know that there's no real treatment effect. And in this case, everything, all these gaps are all just the difference between in sample and out of sample model fit. But if this is the real world, you don't know that. You're, you're trying to estimate what's the treatment effect and all you have is this. So you're trying to determine how much of this gap is a treatment effect and how much of that gap is just model noise, the difference between in sample and out of sample fit. So one way of getting at that difference, that measuring the in sample versus out of sample fit is by dropping that treated region and then running this exact same model for each one of the comparison units. We can then take that and we can look at the distribution of those effects. Now, because there aren't that many donors, it can be hard to look at this distribution and say, is this clearly inside or outside of some you know, 90 or 95% confidence interval, or is this something that you legitimately could get by chance? So one method of handling that is we take that, those distribution of placebo effects, we look at the mean and the standard deviation of those effects, and we plot them as a normal distribution. From there, we can put vertical lines at plus or minus 1.96. So these are the boundaries for a 95% confidence interval. And we can plot where the treatment effect that we got originally lies in that. And so even though we saw that gap from earlier, Right, this gap looked tremendous. I mean, you would look at this and say, wow, what a perfect fit in the pre-period. And then the, the treated group just plummets afterwards. This has to be, you know, a, a large negative effect. 
that large ne negative effect is actually fairly typical when we look at sort of the range of in-sample versus out-of-sample uh, fit among all the other uh, untreated units.